Hello guys and welcome to your 43rd Java tutorial in which we are going to be going over exception handling. Now as you can see here I have deleted all the code from the previous class from the previous tutorial uh, which includes all the classes and interfaces. All I've left is this blank main class. So essentially a blank slate for us to code in. So let me go ahead here and quickly create a scenario in which exception handling would be extremely useful. So say we have two integers x and y. We set x equal to null and we set y equal to null. And uh, we're going to get two errors here because we actually need to cast null to be an integer. All right. Nonetheless, we have these two variables. Uh, we haven't set them equal to anything. We've set them equal to null. Let's say later on in our code, I'm going to put a comment some time later, um, we decide, we forget that we set our x and y to null. Uh, we want to print the product of those two variables. So we're going to go ahead here, we're going to say product, um, and we're going to simply print out the x times y, like so. And if we run this code, we'll see that we'll get an error because we can't actually multiply two integers together when there is no integer values to multiply. So the compiler clearly has a problem with this and it will show it in a very specific way, which we will see right now. Let's save all our stuff and shabam we get an exception in thread main null pointer exception here's the location of that exception in our code so this is okay if we are just developing and we run the program we run into this exception but if this exception occurs when our users or our customers start using our um, developed project or our developed um, program and they get this exception, they have no clue what this is. Well, assume if, if they're not programmers, they have no clue what all this means. So it would be very ad advantageous here if we could simply catch that exception, stop Java from, stop the compiler from printing this automated message, and print our own custom message to the user that is much more decipherable. Well, we are actually going to do exactly this with a try catch block. So let me just quickly type try with two curly braces because uh, this is essentially the code that we're trying for exceptions. We're catching all the errors here. Well, we're, ca we're actually catching them uh, in the catch block, which is uh, where we can type our specific exceptions. So we could catch a null pointer exception E. So if a null pointer exception is thrown in this code block, we're going to catch it, not print some crazy red text, but we're going to print a nice automated message uh, like so. We're going to print out notify the developer that of this null pointer exception. And um, yeah, let me just fix that. And if we run this right now and save all of our resources, we will see that instead of a nice, instead of a red, glaring red text that probably no one except a Java programmer will understand. We get this nice string here that just tells us to notify the developer of this null pointer exception. Much more understandable and decipherable to the common person than our crazy mess message that we had um, printed before. So this is definitely one of the larger aspects of the try larger benefits of the try catch block. The fact that we can catch exceptions and we can print them out like so. Uh, also, this is I'm just going to clear this up right away. We, it doesn't have to be necessarily one exception. It just doesn't we can catch multiple exceptions and handle them in different ways. Let's say we have an input output exception uh, here, but we clearly don't. Uh, that's why we're getting an error. Maybe it's because we have to import. But yeah, we're we're getting an error here because this code here it doesn't actually throw the terminology for this is throw an input output exception. However, the code here does throw a null pointer exception, which is why we can catch it. Right. But what I was saying is that we could catch a numerous amount of exceptions here and we can handle each of them in a different way. But what some programmers like doing is instead of mentioning specific exceptions, they just like to do something like this. They like to catch all exceptions by simply putting the generic uh, class exception E and essentially just uh, do something like this, print error. <laughs> uh, and if you are 
in the development process, it's also good to call the print stack trace method. So e dot print stack trace simply prints out an error message that tells you uh, where we can find the error. Right. So this try catch block is very useful, but can it be extended on in some way? What 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 can we actually do to catch errors or to do something? even beyond what we're seeing here. Well, we can actually add a finally to the very end of this try catch statement. Well, it's actually a try catch finally now. And this finally, um, this statement actually, I know that many, uh, <laughs> many people know about the try catch statement, but not many know about the finally. Well, this finally statement actually allows us to add so-called cleanup code to our try catch finally statement and the this finally block will automatically execute no matter what so our catch statements they will, will only if they catch exceptions will they execute but this finally it'll execute if exceptions are caught if no exceptions are caught it'll always just execute at the end of this uh, entire statement and this is a good place to usually if you if we're working with files and I'll go over um, file input output later. This is a good place to close file streams, input streams, output streams, etc. But here, just to show you uh, that we're actually this finally state this finally block executes no matter what. I'm going to print uh, finally here, <laughs> uh, and uh, if we run this program like so, we will and hit OK. Of course, we'll get error and then finally here. So finally executed and our exception was caught. And uh, this actually works even if our x and y aren't null, if x is say 1 and y is, I don't know, 3, and we run the program, uh, we'll get product 3 and finally here. So finally executes in either case, in the first case or in the second case. Right, so now that we've covered our try, catch, and finally block, uh, we should probably cover the throw keyword in Java. So what exactly is the throw keyword? Well, when you are creating a method, let's say we have a method here that we want to create that is going to, and bear with me here, it's going to be a public static, since we're going to be using it in the main method, it has to be static, public static void print string, in it we're going to have a string s, and we're going to simply print out the string that it's handed, like so. That's all it's going to do, this entire method. Well, we can actually add, at the end of this method declaration, we can add throws uh, null pointer exception, like so. And we can actually add more than one exception. We can go uh, crazy here, and we can add IO exceptions, file exceptions, print stream exceptions, etc. Just simply through the use of that comma that we've been seeing lately. But all this is going to throw is a null pointer exception. So if we did try to use this method uh, outside of this try catch finally block, if we said uh, print print string uh, high, we would most likely want to surround it in a try and catch statement because something backfires with this method uh, it's going to throw this null point exception null pointer exception and it'll give us the standard uh, Java code for it the standard compiler code for it unless we catch that exception so it's usually whenever exceptions are thrown they are meant to be caught and uh, let's just go ahead for interest sake let's go ahead and uh, do something like print string here and if we run the program we get product 3 and finally here. So everything works as expected because this throw null pointer exception uh, is caught. So everything is essentially as you would expect it to be. So thank you guys very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something new about the try catch finally statement as well as the throws keyword. And um, yeah, have a great day everyone. Uh, stay awesome. Peace. Uh, hello again guys, I'm just, uh, I, I just finished recording this video and I realized that I forgot to mention a fairly important thing here with the try, catch, and finally block. Uh, aside from just catching errors and displaying a user-friendly message, 
the try catch and finally block also allows us to at some points uh, avoid program termination sometimes when a fatal exception is thrown and is not caught the entire program ends itself and we're not allowed to continue so by catching that exception we can um, hopefully keep running the program without having to terminate it automatically so uh, thank you guys once again for watching and I'll see you